Hey everyone, this is my MTD Red Troy Bill Pony lawnmower. I've had this mower for 11 years. It's um, needing a new carburetor, so I want to show you guys how I replace the carburetor on these things to keep them running for, uh, well, infinite number of years, I suppose. So this is the carburetor I purchased off of uh, eBay or Amazon. I can't remember. I think it was eBay this time. Uh, they sell it on Amazon as well. They're like $16. Uh, they're China Mart carburetors, um, but this is what I put on whenever a carburetor goes bad. They're so cheap, just buy a new one. Uh, let's unbox this one and see what we're looking at. All right, guys, let's go ahead and unbox our carburetor, see what all's inside of here. My Troy Belt MTD is 15.5 horsepower. Of course, we use our CRKT. CRKT makes excellent knives. I've been using these little knives basically all of my adult life um, whenever they came out i was uh, in my 20s and i've just used them ever since uh, they're great this is the little m16 uh, medium maybe it's a small i don't know it's great you got a nice little lock on it the original m16 uh, crkt just had a liner lock on it this one's great because it also has a secondary lock so you got to pull the locking mechanism back and then slide the liner lock, closes right up. Still has a belt clip. The only thing I like about it is it doesn't have the adjustable belt clip, so you can't put the belt clip this way. Uh, but it does keep the tip pointed down inside your pocket. Looks like we've got our carburetor unboxed now, so let's see what we got. Here's our various seals, gaskets, and hose clamps. Excellent. Not exactly sure what this is. I don't have that on my unit, so that must be for a little bit newer model. Looks like we've got a replacement fuel line. Very good. And then we have the actual carburetor. Pretty clean looking looking unit. Ah, that's interesting that they've got this uh, they've got this blade um, throttle valve. They've got it closed. Um, shut closed with a rubber band. Haven't seen that one before. This is our fuel inlet. And this is our bowl, and this is our electro digital doohickey. So uh, let's get to replacing this, and uh, see if we can get our mower running again. Because I really need to get the grass mode. Just taking off the front of the mower, get that hood off, and take the headlights out. Just uh, use disconnecting the hose clamp and draining the gas tank on the mower out. Here we're removing the air filter. Uh, that way we'll be exposing the plenum and uh, we can start working on taking off the uh, engine shroud. There's four bolts that holds on the engine shroud and there's a small screw. So you want to take those things off. There's two bolts in the front, two bolts in the rear. Uh, the longer bolts go in the front and the shorter bolts go in the rear. And right next to the plenum, that's where that little bitty screw is and we'll get to that here in just a second. You can make this a little bit easier by taken off the gas tank I choose not to but you can save some time there's that little screw right there and it comes right off All right now you want to kind of notate where everything's hooked up take you a picture take you a video and uh, you'll start removing the plenum there's a breather on the back of the carburetor so you want to make sure you capture that pull that off and pull that out of the way um, there are two oh yeah right here I want to show you guys that that is a 7 16th um, socket. So these bolts are kind of interesting right here. There's bolts on the end of them that hold on the plenum, and then they're long and threaded, and uh, that's what holds on the carburetor to the intake manifold. It looks like a 5 16th. Uh, so that's what we used to take off the old carb. Loosen up those two long threaded bolts. There's the new carburetor. They kind of hold it up next to each other. My inlet valve is just a little bit different on this carburetor. We'll see if that causes us problems. I've got the video slowed down here because I wanted you to be able to see clearly how everything's hooked up. That is the uh, choke mechanism uh, that I'm dealing with first. So that first uh, throttle blade is actually the choke blade so that's what I'm transferring over it's nice if you can hold them up side by side 
and uh, just transfer everything over right there on the spot. Uh, this one's a little tricky to get off. There's, I don't think you can see it real well, but there's actually a little bitty wire uh, that connects to the throttle throttle blade as well. And uh, so you get the big the big rod taken off. You kind of gotta twist the uh, the carburetor around a little bit, and it'll pop right out. But you just gotta get it in the right position, and it'll it'll come out. Just give it a little persuasion. There it goes. And you can see the little bitty wire uh, right there. And so those kind of go together right next to each other on the carburetor, on the new carburetor. So I'm just checking to see if there's any gasket material or anything attached to the old intake manifold, or to the intake manifold, I should say. I'm just placing that little wire. There's a little hole next to where the uh, um, throttle rod goes. Pop that throttle rod in. Easy peasy. And we're going to slide the choke mechanism back together. I don't know, I'm not using the proper names for all these things, guys. We're doing it in the driveway. It's okay. Put the new gasket in that came in the kit. And then I use the long threaded rods and just reinstall it. Tighten it back up pretty good. As far as the torque spec on that, it's about three eighths of an UGA. You don't need a whole lot. Go ahead and plug in the electro digital thing. I use some um, cleaner to clean up the uh, the plenum. Tighten that back down. Just checking the connections, to make sure everything's moving free. Plug back in the breathers, and then I realize that my uh, fuel line's a little bit too short, so I'm going to go grab the new fuel line and uh, just add a little bit of length to it whip out my CRKT knife and bam we got a brand new line and I use the new hose clamps now let's put it all back together and see what we got so on this shroud I want just to mention that you really need to be able to line up the guards and the shrouds underneath like there's a guard right there I'm trying to point out where the uh, oil dipstick tube is and there and there's a couple shrouds on the inside you really need to be careful whenever you're reinstalling this hood I'll explain why here in just a few moments but uh, this is probably these bolts are, are some of the hardest ones to install uh, especially if you don't remove the tank, so it may be worthwhile removing the tank. I just don't have a long um, zip tie that will reinstall the tank. So the fronts are easy peasy. The the back you just take some lining up and just go slow. You can get it back uh, together, no problem. And I get those four put back together. And see, I'm working on the back again here, and some of this is cut because I I fiddled with this for a little while to get this one lined up. Um, so after after a while I get it back and that's where I cut it and so this other one went right in no problem and the last little piece to put in is this little tiny screw I think you want to do that to make sure that you're not hitting any of the shrouds inside I destroyed a fan the fan blade in here the cooling blade because I put the shrouds on the wrong side so always tan it by hand to make sure that you haven't hit the shrouds before you start it because if you start it it's going to go to pieces <laughs> there's that little screw we'll just get that guy installed real quick no problem reinstall the air filter button it all back up put the hood back on Put the headlights back in. I think we need to put some more fuel in the tank. Let's go ahead and get it tested. I went ahead and filled this tank up. You may not want to do that. You may just want to uh, put a little bit in so we can test it. All right, guys. So I haven't uh, primed it. I haven't done anything to it. I haven't tried to start it. So let's see if she'll start and how she's going to run. I'm going to activate the throttle a few times just cycle through it all the way up to choke all the way back down to slow choke slow 
You can always double check and make sure that things are moving the way that you, you expect them to. Let's see if the choke will work and here we go, first fire. She runs on high and the choke seems to work fine. Let's see if we can smooth out that idle too. So, got to get the uh, carburetor adjusted uh, right so it's not surging like that. So, I'm going to fiddle with that. But basically that's how you change your carburetor. And um, let's warm this thing up, give it a few laps and see what happens. Alright guys, I know it's dark, uh, we've got some tuning we need to do on the carburetor still. It's got a little surge to it, we'll get that tuned out. Uh, it's mowing great though, running great, and we used a little over half a tank of gas to uh, mow right at an acre's worth of land. Not too bad. Alright, I hope that helped you guys a little bit. Um, let me know down in the comments if you got any questions. Thanks for watching guys, y'all have a good day.